you welcome back. We're glad to know you're still there. It's the run-up, and uh, we're talking 2023 election. The unique thing about this uh, next month's general election is that it would revolve around the Electoral Act of 2022, which paves way for technology to be deployed in the course of the exercise. For instance, it empowers the INEC to transmit election results electronically from the polling unit to a central portal in the Commission's headquarters. In 2019, there was much talk about the technology, but INEX said they had not deployed the technology yet, even when a particular political party insisted there were figures on a supposed server which favored them anyway. As the campaign for the election has kicked off, the Commission has restated its preparedness to deploy every available resource and method to ensure a free, fair and acceptable election this year. But uncertainties still loom as INEC has warned that next month's general election faces serious threat of cancellation if insecurity is not properly tackled. Remember, it's just like a deja vu. Uh, the previous administration of Good Luck Jonathan had to postpone the election for about six weeks just to make sure that the insecurity problem in the, in the country was uh, tackled before the election. But today we are glad to be joined to discuss this about the preparedness of INEC for the 2023 election, that is. Uh, Mrs. Adenike Tadeshe, HOD Voter Education and Publicity, INEC uh, Lagos. Welcome to the program, Mrs. Adeshe, Tadeshe. Thank you very much for having me on the program. We also have the spokesperson of INEG, Mr. Festus Okoye, who has joined us here today. Welcome to the program, Mr. Okoye. Yeah, thank you so much. I know they say ladies first, but I'll start with you this morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's look at the readiness of INEG. Just give us a summary before we go to specifics of uh, what INEG has done to make sure 2023 election is smooth. Well, as you are aware, uh, on the 26th of February, uh, 2022, uh, this commission uh, released the timetable and schedule of activities uh, for the conduct of the 2023 general election. And out of 14 activities we listed, out of the 14 activities uh, we considered as fundamental and critical uh, to the electoral process, uh, we have already implemented 11 of those activities. And um, we are proceeding at peace. Uh, with our preparations. We have prepared and we have prepared well. Uh, we have the full complement of the beavers that will be used for voter accreditation and authentication. And we also have a full complement of the um, beavers we use as, uh, as backup or as redundancies. Uh, we have also uh, started the training of our registration area technical support staff uh, that will in turn train all the ad hoc staff that will uh, operate these beavers. Uh, on election day. We have also deployed over 60% of the non-sensitive materials uh, required for the conduct of this election uh, to, to, various to various locations. Uh, so in terms of uh, our own uh, uh, preparations, uh, we are daily getting ready. We've uh, revised our MOU uh, with the National Union of Road Transport Workers, uh, with the National Association of Road Transport Owners, as well as the Marine Unions. And we're also going to sign individual contracts uh, with the various transport prov uh, um, uh, uh, providers of the various drivers. Uh, so we are getting ready. Uh, we are not going to be found wanting in terms of our own preparations, in terms of our own processes, and also in terms of our own uh, uh, procedures. We are in a slightly more comfortable position uh, now than we were uh, during the 2019 general election. Uh, so we don't have any fears whatsoever relating to the organization um, and conduct of elections. Okay, before I go to Mr. T uh, um Mrs. Tadeshe, uh, I'd like to also find out, you talked about BVAS, and you just received a consignment, the final consignment of BVAS. Uh, so, um, between now, between the time you received the BVAS and that time, configuration and every other thing that needs to be done on the machines need to be done. How far with that, uh, uh, not only the training, but how far with the configuration and everything you need to do on the machines? We are not configuring the beavers now because uh, the configuration of the beavers will take place uh, close to the election period. Uh, what we are doing as a present is to stay, is testing the machines uh, to be sure that the machines are fit for purpose and also to be sure 
that none of those machines has a factory issue or a factory challenge. If they have a, an issue that we can resolve, which our in-house engineers uh, can resolve, we go ahead and resolve them. If they have factory challenges, uh, we return them uh, uh, to the suppliers or the, to the manufacturers and they replace them. So that's exactly uh, what we are doing presently. Uh, the issue of configuration will come later. As I, uh, let me point out that close to the election, we're also going to do a test run or a, or a mock trial of the beavers in at least all the 109 electoral districts uh, of, the, of, this, of this country to let people have a feel of what the beavers looks like and, and to have a feel of uh, the functionality of the beavers uh, before the conduct of the uh, election. And so we are testing the beavers to be sure that all the ones that we have are fit for purpose, especially the ones that we serve, the 176,846 polling units and the 8,809 registration areas in the country. So that's exactly what we are doing at present. Okay. We have no fear on that, if so. Uh, Mrs. Tadishel, let me come to you. Where, when we talk about the 2023 election, one of the most exciting things about it is the fact that a lot of people have generated interest to be a part of this process. And that interest will just be dead if the PVCs cannot be collected and the actual voting done when the day comes. In Lagos, a lot of people have, ex uh, have said that they experience a lot of difficulty in collecting the PVCs. Let us know what the challenges are and your level of success of distributing these PVCs in Lagos. Well, thank you very much. I want to say that the collection of PVCs in Lagos, now that we have gone to the registration areas, we have 245 registration areas in Lagos State. I want to put on record that it has been seamless compared to when we were at the local government level. When we were at the local government level, the record we have on a daily basis cut across the 20 local government offices. We were recording like 14,000 plus in a day. But now that we have devolved to the RA level, the 245 uh, RAs we have in Lagos State, I want to put on record that on a daily basis we have been recording over 40,000 uh, PVCs being collected, cut across the, uh, all the uh, local government when we talk uh, of the areas. Now, so I want to tell I want to I want to be to tell our people that once we have devolved to the adult states now. They too will bear us witness that the collection has been seamless. You can see that we, I, I said 40,000 per day. And now, let, let me tell us this. You know, we have two sets of uh, PVCs that we are giving out. We have the old ones for those people that registered 2011, 2012, uh, the 2018, 2019 general election we had. And the second set of PVCs were those people that registered during the continuous voter registration exercise in 2011 to 2022 July when we rounded it up. So now, the PVCs in Lagos State that we collected, you know, we have total figure of about 7 million registrants in Lagos State. Now, for the PVCs, the old PVCs we collected from the National Headquarters of the Commission was, uh, were like 6,570,000. 291. Now, the old PVCs, the one I just gave you the figure now, that have been collected as at 15th January 2023, 5,685,196. Beginning, we still have 885,095. Now, the new PVCs, as we speak now, if you now put the old PVCs and the new PVCs together, the total overall of the PVCs we collected from the National Headquarters of the Commission, we have 7 million five hundred and ten four hundred and ninety one, And as at 15th January 2023, we've been able to give out 6,299,036. So as we speak now, the uncollected PVCs uh, within our custody, we have, as of 15th, we have 1,211,455. And you know it's going to uh, it is, it will keep decreasing on a daily basis. But this uh, large chunk of our uh, PVCs we have, born out of the old PVCs, because the new PVCs, 
you can see that people are really coming out. And for those people that are engaged in multiple registration and their name had been, had been removed from the new registration, they had no choice than to go back and collect their old PVCs. And this is what we are, we are doing now. And you know, at the RA level, we are going to be there till 22nd, now that we have extension. We'll be there till 22nd January 2023, before we will now devolve to the, uh, we now uh, revert to the local government, the 20 local government uh, offices we have in Lagos, that will be from 23rd to 29th, when we will round up. So I want to say that this exercise has been seamless. The only thing is that we'll tell our people to, to be patient with our staff. Everybody will ensure that everybody will get their card. The only problem we are having now, and it's not even a problem because it has been resolved, so to say, are those that are having omission. Their cars are being omitted for one reason or the other. And we have gotten all their data. And we have sent to the National Headquarters of the Commission. We even received a message now, yesterday, that we should collate all those uh, having omission. And between today and tomorrow, that the cars will be sent to the state uh, office. So we want to tell our people, they should have the assurance that INEC will never disenfranchise anybody from voting. And the only tool they have to vote is the permanent voter card. And we, ask, we know that it is very, very paramount and very, very important. And we are okay. working as CDS to ensure that all eligible reg registrants collect their PVs. Okay, Ms. Mrs. Tadeshe, we, we understand that it is... It has improved tremendously from the time that it was at the local government headquarters to now that they have come to the wards and polling units. But the problem is that we still find people who have complained, a lot of them because Plus TV went out to town to feel the pulse of the people. A lot of people complain that they go to a particular place that they were supposed to get the card, they are sent to somewhere else. They go to that particular place that they have been sent to and they are sent to yet another place. So. What are your challenges? Because I, I'm not saying that you're not doing your job, but what are the challenges so that people get to know as well? Because when you're calling for patients from the citizenry, they need to know what challenges you're facing. So why is it that some people cannot find their names where they are supposed to find their names? What are some of these things that we need to know? Yes, if we have uh, uh, people, uh, registrants of such, because we are trying to ensure that uh, because the they, they, they benchmark for uh, uh, registrant in the polling unit is 750. That is our threshold. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to relocate people. So if they get to any polling unit with their sleep and they cannot get their card, they will be uh, directed to the appropriate place. But we are not even having uh, much uh, challenges of such. Because the challenges we are facing is this omission thing I, I, I just spoke about not quite long. Omission. But I will, we are still telling our people because they keep saying that, ah, this omitted their PVCs. We are not so sure they will print the obvious thing. So they are the ones raising this eyebrow. I will, I will have told them that because we, when, when they get to any polling units and they cannot get their cards, we ensure that we get their, uh, 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 their data and we escalate. Okay. To the appropriate quarters in Lagos, I mean uh, Abuja. Okay. That's the national headquarters where their cards are being uh, uh. So, and we are giving them that assurance because once we have your data, we have your addresses, we have your phone numbers. I just told you that we, we got that directly from the national headquarters now that the cards will be sent to the states between today and tomorrow. And once we have that, we ensure that we get across to all the eligible. Uh, uh, registrants to come and collect their cards. I don't see okay. that as uh, a, a, any big deal because the officials that are working now, we have a lot of them. It, 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 the, the official time for the collection of the PPC is between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. But in Lagos State, we the, the Honorable Rec in his own magnanimity extended the time to like 4.30 on a daily basis. So okay. we are giving them that uh, 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 opportunity Thank you. So they should not exercise any, any Thank you. fear. Thank you. Um, well, let me go back to Mr. Okoye. Um, one thing I have noticed is that sometimes we, we find definitions in other climes different from definitions that we find in Nigeria. Uh, I hope that is not the same way with INEC. We need to know the definition because uh, of vote buying because the citizens would want to know 
when you're giving warning that the person who is buying the vote and the person who is selling the votes, uh, they are all uh, supposed to be in trouble. Now, we need to know what vote buying really is according to the definition of INEC so that when we see something, we can say something as well. What really is vote buying? Well, if, if you go to the Electoral Act, uh, you will not see vote buying in the Electoral Act. What you are likely going to see will be what we call either bribery or voter inducement. Yeah. When you induce a voter uh, to exercise his or her franchise in a manner different from the way the voter wants to exercise his or her franchise, that's voter inducement. When you give a voter uh, a sort or Maggie, or you give a voter money at the level of the pooling unit uh, in order for the voter uh, to vote well, one way or the other. Uh, that is bribery. That is trying to corrupt uh, the electoral process. But vote buying as a concept is our own definition of uh, and our, our own understanding of this concept of trading. Um, you give me your PVC, uh, I give you some money, or you vote for me and you show me how you have voted and then i will give you a reward in return and that's exactly what we are talking about so in the concept in the nigerian concept of vote buying there's a willing buyer and also a willing seller so it's a transactional uh, uh, deal a transactional business uh, between two um, between two individuals and uh, so and both both the person who is buying uh, is um, guilty of an infraction and those the person who is selling is also guilty of an infraction but that is really at a theoretical level there are different reasons why people want to compromise the sanctity of the ballot there are different reasons why people want to say their pvcs this is because there are some people who do not realize the power and the potency of the pvc they don't realize the sovereign power and the ownership of the electoral process embedded in the PVC. And so I believe that um, with enlightenment and also with uh, robust uh, uh, and comprehensive advocacy, we will begin to sensitize our people on the dangers of uh, selling their PVC or selling their votes uh, for any amount whatsoever, uh, because good governance resides in the PVC. The PVC is not equivalent to an ATM card. You can only withdraw money with an ATM card. But the PVC can change the government. And, this, and, and um, there's a huge difference uh, between the two. And so I think that uh, our people uh, should not, on any account whatsoever, uh, compromise the sanctity of the PVC or compromise the sovereign rights and ownership of the electoral process embedded in the PVC. Oh, okay. Um, you mentioned the fact that uh, a transaction has to be carried out between the person who is buying and the person who is selling. In some cases, the person who is, um, who is buying will not even tell the person who is, in quote, selling that this is what is going on. I'll give you an example. For instance, politicians, because they know that maybe on the day of election they cannot exchange money for votes and all that, they do what they call empowerment. In some states, we have found governors, for instance, who want to come back or who are trying to... Uh, go to the Senate, for instance, um, now doing an empowerment scheme and they say this empowerment scheme is going to last till after the election. Categorically, they're telling you it's not a, a, a thing that will continue all year round. It will end in March. And this is what is going on. Some people have called this vote buying, but it doesn't necessarily have to have the consent or, or something like that of the person who is receiving. Because you go to a polling world, you select five people, and you say, because I know the suffering in the land is so much, let me bless five families. From now till March, they will be collecting. So every polling unit will have five people. And five people will translate into five families, which will have at least five people each uh, that will vote in that family. So how do you define this? It can't, can this be also called vote buying or because it's not done on election day or two days before the election or they are not using the words vote for me, you cannot call it vote buying? You, you know, um, uh, people can be very creative and people can also be very innovative and people can mask 
uh, uh, bribery, corruption, and inducement using uh, different concepts, using different cliches, and also using different methods and using uh, different method methodologies. Unfortunately, uh, the electoral management body cannot be everywhere uh, and cannot monitor every program organized by individuals, organized by groups, and also organized by government. Um, empowerment programs, as I understand them, and as uh, the concept um, uh, uh, connotes, uh, is part of good governance. Uh, but when you lace the empowerment uh, with, um, uh, 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 with the seat, or when you lace in the empowerment and mask it with a completely different concept, it becomes uh, uh, so, so, something else. Our concern and the remit of the commission is that we do not want to see any candidate, any politician, any political party at the precepts of the pooling unit uh, trying to buy or sell PVC. Okay. We don't want a situation where people will be asked to show how they have voted or who they have voted for. We are not too much interested in what goes on at the level of governance and also at the approaches governments at the various levels adopt in ameliorating the suffering of our people. Unfortunately, there are some people who exploit the poverty of our people, there are some people who exploit the vulnerabilities of our people in order to um, uh, corrupt them and also in order to do uh, things that are uh, on two world and also in order to skew their, 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 their brains from uh, doing what is right. And so I believe that um, uh, we should continue to uh, advocate enlighten our people and also um, uh, empower them uh, both economically and politically and uh, through electoral education uh, to understand the variables and also the, the lines, the red lines uh, between empowerment and vote buying. And I think that that is what we will have to continue to do. It's a long way, but I'm sure we are going to get there sooner than later. Okay, thank you. So, well, that means a lot more has to be done about education so that the people will know. Like you said, red lines, the way they should not cross. And the fact that, like you mentioned, some of these things are part of good governance. The people should be able to decipher between what is done because that is what is, is supposed to be done as good governance and what is done because the votes are needed. So that people get to know that you can still collect those things because those are part of good governance and then do what is right for you. Talking about education, let me come to Mrs. Uh, Tadashi. Um, let's know about in Lagos here. How far are you taking this advocacy? Because even though Lagos uh, has a population, we, we say that 10% of the population of Nigeria resides in Lagos. And if we get it right in Lagos, there's a likelihood that we might get it right everywhere else in Nigeria. How far are you taking this advocacy to the grassroots? Because it doesn't end in just giving uh, PVCs to people. So what are you doing to raise the awareness of people uh, regarding this election 2023? Thank you very much. Uh, concerning the uh, sensitization of our people to know what they are to do, before, during, and even after the election. Uh, we have held a series of stakeholders meetings where we, uh, we, 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 in the stakeholders meeting, we have the, the traditional rulers at the state level, we have the media, we have uh, the market women, we are all the stakeholders, all the important stakeholders. We, we've been holding meetings, even the political parties. Very, very important. Yes, we have meetings with them and we have sensitizing them. That is at the state level. And even market outreaches. We have been going out. We have partnered with some. And we have a set of people who to voter education providers. We have them in Lagos State. And they too, they have been doing wonders. They have been going from one market to the other. We have been following them. We have been going on advocacy visits to sensitize our people, to tell them what they ought to do and what they ought not to do at the state level. And even at the local government level, all the local government uh, uh, offices we have in Lagos State, they have been having interface with all their stakeholders as well. And we have those we call voter education desk officers in each of the local government, we call them VEDOS. Their own assignment is, go, is to go to one uh, uh, marketplace, uh, town halls, 
to tell our people what INEC is doing at the moment. And this they have been doing. And that is why we are having this uh, 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 large uh, turnout of our people coming out to collect their cards. Because if you have not been doing the advocacy, advocacy basis sensitizations, people might not know what we are doing. They might not even know we are at the level. So we are not resting on our hours in Lagos State. We have been going all around. And as we speak now, we have even uh, picked a date to meet with the Council of Traditional Rulers in Lagos State. So we are all the traditional rulers. We want to tell them all the activities we have in furtherance of the 2023 general election. So we are not resting on our hours. Like I said, we have been moving from one area to the other sensitizing our people, we have, uh, like these vendors have said, they, they, they are not even resting. They go to, but you know, let me let me say something that is very, very, it might be funny to our people. Concerning this issue of a collection of PVCs, when they tell our people, come to the area now that we have the PVC, you know, just come and collect. You know what most people say? Bring to our house. Bring the uh, PVCs to our houses. If you knock on our door, we collect. And they, and they say, ah, but we, we you, since you can come out yourself for registration, because we don't give these cars out by proxy. So our people will always want, <laughs> and that's what we are doing anyway, we keep educating our people. Okay. We keep sensitizing them. We keep telling them so that they know what to do. This issue of vote buying that my boss just talked about, we are not going to relent on this uh, 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 voter education. Because most of them, they, they might be ignorant of what they are doing. Like some people were telling us in Lagos State that they are collecting, some, some set of people are collecting their cards. For what reason? Because we are telling them, if you collect another person's card, it's not going to be useful for you on the election day. With this use of our beavers, the bimodal voter accreditation system, you cannot use another person's uh, uh, card. And that's what we are saying. It will okay. authenticate either your fingerprints or your facials. So collecting their cards, we really don't know why they are doing that. Your voter identification number is, 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 is peculiar and specific to yourself. And you should not divulge it for whatever reason. So I don't know why our people are so... But like my boss has said, we keep on educating our people. So when they know the importance of the PVC as their tool, as their power, as their voice, I know they will not want to give it for whatever peanuts. Okay. Um, well... Uh, Mr. Okoye and uh, Mrs. Tadese, we are going to take a short break. And when we return, most of the things we'll be talking about will border on security. Security of the technology, security of lives and property, security, everything security uh, when we talk about the election. So that you uh, clarify some gray areas. But just stay with us. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. You're welcome back. It's still the run-up, and we're looking at the 2023 uh, election. We are being joined by uh, Mrs. Adenike Tadese, who is the head of the department, Voter Education, INEC Lagos. And we also have the spokesman of uh, INEC, uh, Mr. Festus Okoye. Uh, we'd, we'd just like to call you the spokesman. You, uh, <laughs> you, your titles are long. But a spokesman it is that we enjoy calling you. Uh, let, let's begin with you. Um, uh, Mrs. Tadeshe just talked about uh, the fact that some people buy uh, voters, voter card, voters' cards rather, and they say it's not going to be of any benefit to them. Walk us through how these things work anyway, because some people might still be nursing the idea of buying it, except for the fact that some people say, you go to a catchment area, as it were, of a particular political party and buy the PVC so that the voting strength in that place will not be good enough. So just tell us how vote buying, um, voters' card buying uh, will affect the election, whether positively or negatively, or whether it will have no effect on the forthcoming election. Well, uh, 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 from two perspectives, it will have an effect. The first perspective is, if you deny somebody of his or her 
permanent voters card, what you have done is to take away part of the person's sovereign right uh, to make a determination on how he or she wants to be governed. That is one. Secondly, when you buy up a PVC, there's a possibility that you are suppressing the vote. And as you pointed out, someone can go and buy up the PVCs of some uh, of, of, of people in an area he or she believes uh, may be um, uh, uh, hostile to his or her political aspiration. In which case, those people will not have an opportunity of coming to the police units uh, to come and use their PVCs to vote. So that is called vote suppression or voter suppression. You have suppressed their right to come to the police units uh, to exercise their democratic franchise. Okay. The second aspect is if you buy the PVC and you want to use it at the level of the pulley unit, now that is where the problem is. The, the, the details of each registered voter in Nigeria now resides in the beavers. But section 47, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2022 still makes it mandatory that any voter who wants to exercise his or her franchise must come to the polling unit with his or her voter's card. So when you approach a presiding officer with your voter's card, they will look at the last six digits of your voter identification number or VIN number and use it uh, to call up your details from the, from the beavers. They will also certify that you are one of those that have been captured in the voters' register that will be used for the conduct of election. And that is where it ends. Thereafter, the voter must be accredited or authenticated using the beavers, using the fingerprint technology or the facial technology. And so when the beavers tries to identify you using your fingerprint and it fails, then the, you will be identified using your facials. So if the beavers cannot identify your fingerprints and cannot identify your face, there's only one conclusion, and that conclusion is that you are engaged in identity theft and you are not who you uh, 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 purport to be, in which case we will not allow you to vote. The only way we will allow you to vote is for you to go home and go and bring your authentic fingerprint and bring your authentic face and come back to the police unit before we allow you to vote. And so buying up the PVC uh, and uh, giving to uh, uh, someone who is not the registered voter or coming to the polling unit thinking that uh, you can use it to vote twice is next to impossibility and uh, people should perish that idea and stop um, uh, uh, trying to buy up PVCs uh, because at the end of the day it will be completely useless and they will be looking for where to dump the PVC either in a soccer way or, or on the highway and so it's completely useless. Okay, um, by way of emphasis, because we've been talking beavers all this while, uh, but just walk us through how beavers is actually a game changer in this election. You've, you've touched on it, even talking about it today, but just specifically tell us why we should really, really be excited about this election just because of beavers and any other technology you might is, have. Yes, Yes, the, the beavers is more or less like an arbitrator. Uh, uh, it's, it's not an arbiter between the Nigerian people and the electoral management body. What we have done is to introduce a technology that makes it possible for only registered voters in Nigeria to vote on election day. Prior to this particular period, when we were using the incident form, when the data of each registered voter resides in the PVC. Uh, some people will go to the polling unit and then the uh, uh, smart card reader is unable to read their data and they say, oh, give me incident form to fill and they are giving incident form uh, to fill. So you find a situation where one individual can vote 10, 15 or 20 times on the basis of the fact that his or her uh, uh, PVC cannot be read by the uh, smart card reader. That error is over. Because, as I pointed out, the data of each registered voter now resides inside the beavers. And the beavers contains only the data of a, all the registered voters in a particular polling unit and no more. So, 
the viewers must be in a position to authenticate your fingerprint. If you authenticate your fingerprint, you'll be in a position to vote. If it does not authenticate your fingerprint and authenticate your face facials, you'll be in a position to vote. If it does not do these two things, you will not be allowed uh, to vote. And so all those who have bought up PVCs thinking that they can use it should just perish the thought and go and dump them in a place where we can see them and then we retrieve them and give and, and make it available to the uh, to the owners. And so the beavers is a game changer and the beavers is the real arbitrator in relation to the electoral process. And we are really, really excited about it. And it's going to restore ownership of the electoral process in the hands of the Nigerian people. How much, how much of uh, the, uh, the people living with disabilities community represented in, in, or, or considered in this election? For instance, someone wants to vote and the face might be there, the hands may not be there. Uh, but the person wants to vote. Someone wants to vote and he is blind. Uh, he is willing. The fingerprints are there, the face is there, but he is blind. Do you have Braille for the blind, for instance? Do you have alternatives for the people who may not have the fingerprints to do this in the forthcoming election? We have robust relationship. We have an exciting relationship. We have a trust relationship with persons with disability. We incorporated them much more concretely and much more comprehensively in the electoral process. When we were doing all the off-cycle governorship elections and other by-elections, we made sure that we incorporated with them to collect the data, segregated data of persons living with disability in all the polling units across the Federation. We're also cooperating with them at this moment. We are going to deploy Braille ballot guide. We're also going to deploy magnifying glasses. We are also going to print posters for various categories of persons with disability. And we have also trained our presiding officers on the need, on the bounding need, on the constitutional and legal need to give persons with disability priority in terms of voting. So we have an exciting relationship uh, with persons with disability and we have been working with them and we continue to work with them in this election, in the 2023 general election, no individual will be left behind. No person with disability will be left behind. Every Nigerian who is validly registered will have an opportunity of exercising his or her democratic franchise. Okay, before we go to the national, we'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Okoye, for the national outlook of security. Let, let me go to Mrs. Tadashi right now. Um, Lagos State, some people feel that there might be some flashpoints during the forthcoming uh, general election. What are you doing to make sure security in Lagos is top-notch? Before the national body says, this is what we are going to do, surely Lagos State must have been putting some things in place because it is a peculiar state. What are you doing in terms of security? Mrs. Tadeshe, please. Okay, uh, Mr. Okoye, it seems uh, she's not there. Um, while we are waiting for her to to she 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 is muted and that's the problem. Okay, and well, let me let me come to you. Uh, the uh, the chairman of INEG said something, is expressed some concerns that the uh, twenty twenty three general elections may be uh, postponed because of security reasons. Um, what really are the specific uh, security challenges? that made him to say that? Because it has put a lot of Nigerians on edge. Unless we begin to know what specifics uh, he was talking about, then we might, a lot of people might just stay home and say, okay, even INEC chairman said the security situation is too bad. So let's know why he said that and what, has, what is being done right now to make sure that doesn't come up. Postponement of the election. The Commission has clarified that particular issue. The Commission has made it very clear that the conduct of the 2023 general election is sacrosanct. And the Commission is proceeding with organizing, undertaking, and supervising this election. If the election is not sacrosanct, 
we couldn't have created or converted the uh, uh, pool, uh, uh, voting points and voting point settlements into full-fledged pooling units, thereby bringing the total number of uh, uh, pooling units in Nigeria uh, to 176,846. Moreover, we have also displayed the voters register for claims and objections. And presently, we have a total registered voter population of 93,469,008. And these people are presently collecting their permanent voters cards. I've also informed you that we have the full complement of the beavers required for the conduct of this election. And we, pres we are presently engaged in various trainings uh, meant uh, to um, prepare both ad hoc staff and our permanent staff um, for this election. So we are getting ready for this election. If you look at section 132, uh, subsection 2 of the Constitution, you can see that the period for the conduct of elections has been constitutionally circumscribed. And the moment you try to get out of this constitutional uh, uh, window, it becomes very, very problematic. So this co uh, uh, commission is working and working very hard to make sure that the 2023 general election is successful. I pointed out that when we started that we are now in a more comfortable position than we were in 2019. And the chairman has made it clear that under his supervision, that under his watch, elections will no longer be postponed on grounds of logistics and logistic challenges. Moreover, we have received assurances from the various security agencies and we, they continue to assure us and assure the nation that they are doing all within their power to secure the nation, to secure the country, to make sure that the election materials are distributed, to make sure that the election personnel are, 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 um, feel comfortable going out to go and uh, uh, work for the, for, 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 uh, during this election, and also to make sure that the voters have the confidence and the trust to go out on election day to go and exercise their, their franchise. So we have no doubt whatsoever that we are prepared for this election. The nation is prepared for this election. The Nigerian people are prepared for this election. And almost all the sectors are prepared for this election. And we are proceeding at peace with preparations. We have executed 11 out of the 14 items we have in our schedule, uh, uh, timetable and schedule of activities. And so uh, if there's any sector, if there's any commission that is prepared for this election, it is the Independent National Electoral Commission. Okay, the Independent National Electoral Commission can be prepared for the election, but the people may not be. Okay, this is why I say this. There may be some things that INEC will want the people to do because all the responsibility cannot be on just INEC. The citizens have their responsibility as well. So what are these responsibilities? What are these things that you expect from the citizens of Nigeria to ensure that this election will be free, fair, credible, and seen to be so? Nigerians must understand that democracy must be nurtured. Nigerians must understand that democracy must be protected. Nigerians must also understand that for democracy to endure in this country, they must take ownership of this democracy. In other words, during this election, Nigerians must engage in mandate protection. Election rigors only go to pooling units and communities that are vulnerable. They hardly approach communities where people are conscious, where people do not want anything to happen to their pooling units or their registration areas or their local governments. So Nigerians must engage in mandate protection. Secondly, Nigerians must try as much as possible to come out and use that permanent voters card to exercise their franchise. As I said, the permanent voters card is not an alternative ID card. The permanent voters card is not an ATM card. The permanent voters card is for voting and voting alone. So collect your permanent voters card and show up on, 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 election, on election day. I also want Nigerians to be sure, and we want to assure them, that this commission will make their votes to count, and that only the Nigerian people can put any government in power, and only their votes can put any government in power. The chairman of the commission has made it clear, and has also assisted the commission to put in place processes and procedures that makes it even impossible for a national commissioner 
to influence the vote in a single polling unit. We are building a professional commission, we are building an ethical commission, and also we are building a commission owned by the Nigerian people, and a commission that we have the trust of the Nigerian people, and that is where we are. And so let Nigerians take ownership of this particular process, show up on election day, engage in mandate protection, and defend this democracy. That is their responsibility, and that's what the commission expects from the Nigerian people. Okay, just briefly, since you talked about um, mandate protection, uh, there was a time that INEC, or maybe I heard wrong, said that uh, at the polling station when the election is going on, nobody is allowed to uh, use cameras or phones to record some things. Maybe I got the information wrong, but if I didn't get it right, has that law been lifted? Can people protect their mandate by by amplifying the wrongs that may be done in polling units on the day of election? What the commission said is that one of the hallmarks of democracy, one of the beauties of democracy, is the secrecy of the vote. The commission said no individual is allowed to go into the voting compartment okay. to go and film or okay. photograph how he or she has voted. Okay. And no individual is also permitted to go and film how somebody has voted within the voting compartment. Okay. Because what we operate is what is called open secret ballot. You don't print in secret and vote in public because the Electoral Act says that the ballot box must be kept in the full view of people from beginning to the end of, um, of, of voting. And so we don't want people to go and show how somebody has thumbprinted or how somebody has voted. But in terms of uh, staying around uh, in the polling units, the commission has nothing uh, uh, against people staying around so long as they don't interfere with the voting process or with the election process. They can stay around, see how people are voting, see how results are being collected, see how results are being counted, see where results are uh, 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 the, 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 the votes of the people uh, of the political parties are declared at the polling unit, see how uh, from EC8A is being, um, uh, is being filled, and also see how the entire electoral process is going on. We don't have any, any challenge with that, and we encourage people uh, to. Uh, um, stay around and see how the electoral process uh, progresses. Okay, this is very clear now because it, it was as if generally anywhere the election is going on, even phones are not allowed and all that. But now we know the polling booth itself, uh, people previously used to go there, maybe because of this vote buying and all that, to take photographs and videos of how people are voting so that after that the rewards will come. So it's good that you've clarified this and you have also said that people can stay around and make sure everything goes well. But like you said, not to disrupt the process of the election. Just a final word to the whole of Nigerians, even though you've been saying some things like that, just give us some more assurances about the election. And if we have uh, Mrs. Tadish here, maybe he she will also talk to the Lagosians. Please, Mr. Okoye, finally. To Nigeria. Well, uh, 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 the HOD is muted, so she cannot mute herself so that she can also talk to the people of uh, Lagos. Uh, Lagos. Yes. Uh, let, let, me, let me just say this. We want to assure the nation, and the chairman has given this assurance over and over again, that this commission is a Nigerian People's Commission. This commission is a public trust. We are going to be very, very transparent and we are going to be very open in terms of our processes and our procedures. And we want to assure Nigerians that only the votes of the people, only the votes of the Nigerian people will determine the outcome of this election. This commission will work and work assiduously for the people of this country. And we are going to make sure that their votes count and their votes uh, will continue to count. Thank you. They have our assurance on this. This commission will not disappoint the Nigerian people. This commission will continue to work uh, for the good of the Nigerian people, and nothing will deter us. We have the courage, we have the staying power, and we also have the planning ability and disposition uh, to do what is right for the people of this country. Thank you very much, Mr. Okoye, for all this. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Tadashe, if you have unmuted yourself, can you say something to Lagosians very briefly now? Yeah, what I want to tell our Lagosians to please avail themselves the opportunity of coming out now that we are still at the area level, the world level, because 
that will make it so easier for them to collect their cars. And you know that without the PVC, you cannot vote on election day. Even if you have if you don't have the PVC, don't even bother coming out on election day because that's the only tool. It is your power, it is your right to vote for leaders of your choice. And together, we can make a change in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we've been talking with uh, Mr. Festus Okoye, the uh, spokesperson of uh, INEC, and also with the HOD of Voter Education, INEC Lagos, uh, Mrs. Uh, Adenike Tadeshe. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. And we're getting closer and closer to the election. So we will be calling on you when we have questions that we need answers to. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we'll take a break now for the news. And when we return, we wrap up the program. Stay with us. <laughs>